Hello, Copic in the craft room. This is Michelle Houghton as usual. I've got the second part to this um, stamp set from Three Room Studio. I talked about this guy last week and we did the moose and bunny on last week's video tutorial. So this week I have this bear and I assume he was meant to be sledding down a snow hill and possibly even a polar bear out in the snow and ice. But we are going to go for a different look today. This is going to be more of a brown bear. And he is going to be doing a little river rafting. So starting with some E4s. I've got an E4-3 that I'm going to start with. And I'm not coloring in the full thing this time. I'm just doing those highlight areas and going a little further into where those mid-tones will happen. But kind of mapping that out. Then you're going to see me work with some E4-4 and E47 to darken into those shadow areas. And then I will hit reverse and go back through the colors to blend them together. Next is the inner tube and I just decided on some bright cheery colors and I am definitely tackling some reds. So I've got an R46 and I'm going to do these from dark to light. And I'm starting at the darkest area on the raft and working my way up. Remember this is like a cylinder wrapped in kind of that donut shape. R17 is next so I've jumped a big jump in saturation. And actually done a little backwards jump in value, but it's going to work. Then I'm going to go down to that R15 and R12 as I approach that highlight area. For the opposite bands, I'm actually going to leave them white. So I am going to use a BV20 and my colorless blender on the bigger areas. And then in that deeper shadow area where it's tucked in underneath the bear's um, tail or rump, we're going to get into some BV23 here in a second.
I'm also going to use the BV20 and BV23 for some cast shadows. You're going to notice I do the BV20 under the um, arm on the white section, but then I switch to that BV23 when it hits the red. Um, it just seemed to be more effective that way. It seemed to kind of run well and worked. Then I am using a post-it note. This is one that has sticky all across the back. And I stamped the image a second time on this guy, trimmed it out, and covered him up. And now we're going to do some airbrushing to create this river that the bear is riding along. And all this is is a piece of cardstock that I did kind of a wavy cut across. It's obviously an old scrap that I've used. So I've got two colors, a B95 and a BG72. And I'm gonna do some alternating back and forth between the two. Sometimes I'll do two of one, then three of the other, one of one. So you're just gonna see me switch back and forth and keep moving that little cut line to create the movement of the river. And of course, the best part of any masking is the unveiling. So I'm going to peel that little post-it note guy off. These guys are extra sticky and they have that adhesive all the way across the back. So I can't find them anymore, but boy, they're my absolute favorite ones to go to. I'm going to save that post-it note. I'm going to tuck it in with my stamps so that I have it for the next time I want to mask this guy. Or if I decide I want to, I will have it available. And then I'm going to turn this little guy into a card. I just want to give a big thank you to Sandy over at Three Room Studios. I love her stamps. And as she's just starting up, I'm super excited to be supporting her business and pointing people in her direction. If you have not had a chance recently, head over to um, scrapweaver.com to see what I'm going on. Everybody out there, please have a happy and healthy colorful day.